two collaboratives, in our case, seem collaborative, goes out to bid annually to uh, solicit uh, transportation costs. Um, so it is a public statewide bid. Coincidentally, at this stage, by the way, it's a North Reading company that provides that transportation, North Reading Transportation, that provides special education transportation for all of the members of the SEAM collaborative. So, uh, so the costs are monitored in that fashion uh, through public bidding and all, uh, throughout that, pretty much that whole spent budget. Um, the next item down is transportation. Uh, as the committee will recall, uh, we did go out to bid for that recently and, and announced the bids uh, about a month ago. And uh, so the costs of our regular red transportation are, are uh, covered by a publicly bid process. The committee will also uh, remember that we have structured our regular education costs in such a fashion as to make it self-supporting as much as we can. When I say self-supporting, I, I mean that um, for students for whom we are required to transport, we take that out of our school community budget. <coughs> for students that state law does not require that we transport, we charge a bus user fee, which pretty much covers the cost of that transportation. So uh, that explains how we arrive at our user fee costs and how we arrive at the expenses that is contained within our budget for regular education transportation. Moving down the list, uh, utilities. Um, you'll know that, I, as you all know, how aggressive I am about uh, uh, trying to save money on energy costs. Uh, we continue to have great success there. Um, you know, sometimes a little controversial about what uh, we set our thermostats at, but um, I, there's nothing, you know, I'm real popular at home, by the way, when you, in the winter, when people come home and see my, my thermostat at 60 degrees, but uh, we can't, can't get away with that here. But there's nothing, I, I really don't like spending money on utilities. Uh, well, you refuse to let us turn the air conditioning on tonight, well, obviously. Um, <laughs> but we do, you know, the committee knows we do, if our, if a primary uh, budget philosophy is to make as many dollars available as we can to personnel, then it goes to make sense that we try to be as frugal as we can with the expense side of the budget. So uh, utilities are really three things, telephone, electricity, and heating. The heating, uh, as Mel and I will talk frequently, uh, we uh, are part of a statewide consortium. We buy our natural gas from uh, in volume. Um, the good news is we have literally uh, set our pricing for the next winter. We know what we're going to be spending for natural gas, gas for the uh, upcoming winter. We don't know how many degree days there'll be and how much heat we'll be having to buy, but we have a, an outstanding price. Um, uh, we, we look at the uh, natural gas futures almost daily, and when the, when the time is right, we buy our gas, and uh, we have a wonderful price for the upcoming winter. Uh, electricity we buy through Reading Municipal, very low cost. It's about 10, 10 and a half cents a kilowatt, can't beat that price anywhere. Telephone costs, uh, we, we buy, once again, through a state contract. We have a Centrex uh, contract with, with Verizon, um, much less expensive than you can get as a consumer. Um, and the way to go for a lot of these things is to get involved in consortiums and to get involved with statewide contracts because volume dictates cost. Um, and uh, we, I think, do pretty well in our savings and utilities. I, I would uh, I would go on record as saying I think in the last four or five years we've literally probably not not probably that we've literally saved a hundred thousand dollars for this district in our management of uh, heating costs in this well, district. Well and let's not forget two years ago when the costs skyrocketed of all of the different heating fuels. Right. Um, we had an opportunity to spend fifty thousand dollars from the town and we didn't touch one cent of it. And we never touched a cent of that money that they put um, in, a, in an account if necessary. And that's through, uh, you know, we have the ability now to literally regulate the temperature in almost every classroom in this district from our home computer. Um, and we were able to do that on, on days where um, uh, less heat is needed. So, you know, we, we've made some investments there. We've done a lot of other things with conversion of uh, fluorescent lighting to more energy. You know, I don't want to get into the detailed details here, but I think it's important every few years to remind ourselves that we're under, we work very aggressively to try to make dollars available for people. I mean, and, and the less we spend on expenses, the better. Uh, 
continuing on, uh, the remaining piece of the expense budget amounts to about 30 percent, um, and that and the primary components of that 30 percent would be legal services, fixed expenses. What are examples of fixed expenses? Um, ins insurance premiums that we have to pay, um, unemployment costs, uh, crossing guards, and there's a lot of small fixed expense that comprise that category. And then the school budgets. Um, the school, the present, uh, the FY11 allocation for the various schools is very similar to the um, FY2001 allocation. So we've said this before, we're, we're literally allocating the same amount of money to the schools that we did about 10 years ago. And uh, that uh, comprises <coughs> some challenges, but I, I think we've found remedies for it as best we can. Um, when you are so tight with expenses, what are the implications? I think that some of the implications that jump to mind are, first, um, we become overly reliant on user fees to some extent, because that's really what buttresses and, and uh, complements the, the expense needs that the dist district has. Um, if you compare North Reading's user fees against other communities, they're on the high side. Um, and another implication of uh, of a tight expense budget is the impact on parents uh, who are making contributions to classrooms um, all the way through. And as parents, they know what we're talking about when we mention that. So um, uh, another aspect, by the way, of school budgets would be photocopiers. And I should mention that because uh, we're very aggressive there. We, we do a statewide bid for both the acquisition of the photocopiers and the ongoing maintenance fees that uh, are sometimes the hidden cost of uh, operating photocopiers. Um, there, uh, there's something called COMPASS, which is down at the bottom of the sheet. COMPASS is a, an acronym for a procurement program that the state manages, where I, I even put the, the URL there. Uh, as a, even citizens, you can go in there and see what state contracts have been negotiated in everything from uh, road asphalt to uniforms to livestock to uh, paper to uh, schoolroom furniture. I mean, uh, you can purchase almost anything through the state contracts on a volume basis. Um, and we always look to see what the pricing is there prior to moving ahead on anything else. Um, in, in closing, um, I just wanted to also mention that many of our uh, procurement policies are governed by Chapter 30B. Um, those are state laws that have uh, that provide us guidance on uh, how we are to spend money, um, and uh, we are subject to the rules. Uh, all state agencies, public agencies, uh, are subject to these rules. We are audited upon this every, every year. Uh, that end of the year report that I spoke of, I believe, two weeks ago, uh, they come in and they look at our uh, higher priced items to see if we appropriately procured them. And did we have enough bids? Uh, were they in proper order? And uh, I, I, there haven't been any issues. Uh, you can see that uh, under $5,000, we are required to use sound business practices. Between five dollars and $25,000, we're required to solicit price quotes. Um, and then over $25,000, we have to uh, issue an IFB or an RFP, whatever may be required, and go out to the um, statewide bid process. Um, but thank you for the opportunity to have this discussion with you. Um, I brought it up because uh, from time to time people have questions about the bills as they come through. Um, I, I want to uh, emphasize that I'm always available to answer questions about what you see contained in that packet. Please call me. Um, I think we try to run a very transparent process. Um, I think the business office is uh, rightfully uh, proud of the manner in which we conduct business for North Reading Schools, um, and we're very careful about doing it the right way. So I uh, appreciate the time. I just add a subtitle to your new title, um, Go-To Guy for Natural Gas Futures. That will be your sub <laughs> <laughs> under, your, under, your, under your new title, Carl, because yeah. You know, after, we, after we, we locked in the pricing, I was so accustomed to looking every day, it's like I have no fun anymore, right. you know? And I don't want it to go any lower. Right. Any questions for Carl? I think that's a good, uh, good summary for all of us, uh, new, new members as well as 
those of us who've been around for a while in terms of a reminder of what we're spending and, and, and how we're spending it. So. And it's helpful to just be reminded of all the hidden costs that exactly. are part of our expense budget as well. Thank you. Thanks, Carl. Old business. Uh, we don't have anything specific there, but um, this relates to what we have in the correspondence, which is um, Ms. Bodwin's resignation. And under old business, if we could discuss for a minute the process of replacing Pam, where that stands now. I don't know if you or if Kathleen wants to address that. Um, well, we uh, posted the position. One of the, one of the questions was whether or not um, Kathleen wanted to redefine the position or any way we structured it. And as you can tell by the document she gave you, she decided not to. So the position is posted as is, and I believe it's posted as a direct Directulum. Holy smokes. <laughs> <laughs> a directulum. A directulum, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get him some water. Get him hydrated. It's the heat. The hydrated <laughs> Anyway, getting back to what we were talking about. Um, the director of curriculum and technology, and I, it's on School Spring, and I'm going to say the DESC website. I think we decided to do those two websites. And we have 20 plus applicants. It closes Friday. It closes this Friday. And then, um, again, I yield to my colleague across the way here to tell you what the process will be. Okay. Thank you. There will be assembling and, uh, an interview committee. Um, and it will be representative of the school district. And we'll, we'll screen and then conduct the interviews through uh, the screening process and um, of course do our reference checks and, and then make a recommendation for hiring an individual which we soon arrive in later. Is that one of the is that like the PPS position where we have to vote on no it's not okay. So that's a uh, mm -hmm. okay. great. That should move on. It's good to hear we have so many yep. respondents so we should be in pretty good shape or mm -hmm. expect there. Great. Any questions? Bills and payrolls, I think, are signed. Minutes. Kathleen, minutes are always a highlight of our of our meeting. See, Mr. Webster and I was in competition about how, how many typos we can find. Or who read, or who actually who read all actually the minutes. Read all, yeah, that, we that's, we that's had a former nice member of the committee, but, you know. Mr. Jervy, who read every word, every punctuation mark. He read everything of every minute and never missed anything. The problem was that meant none of the rest of us ever read all the minutes because Mr. Jervy. So when Mr. Jervy left, we we had a. <laughs> and I still never read the minutes. Like, <laughs> but you trust us. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I read them. I did too. I'm, I'm assuming. Mr. Bow. Yeah. Okay. You know that I read. I know. <laughs> um, so first we have the May 24th. Uh, May 24th, the first one. Yes. Yep. May 24th meeting, um, which was in the middle school library. Um, here, and I went through this, and I did not see anything out of order. I suppose, Sir Caddy. I move to approve the minutes from the open session on May 24th. Second. Motion to approve and second for the May 24th open session. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. And we have the May 24th, 2010. Executive session. Um, Mr. Bowers will not vote on this because he had to excuse himself uh, to avoid conflict of interest. Issues? Um, yes, my name is misspelled. Oh. In the last paragraph. Oh, that's right. <laughs> you spelled Karen again. <laughs> it's that E, that E yeah, instead of I. I Just remember, I before E except after C. Yeah. Right? I don't know. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Other than Eric Ketty, being spelled wrong. Anything else? Well, in everything here? is is fine, and I would like to make a motion to approve the minutes from the May twenty fourth executive session. I'll second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. One abstain. The June seventh meeting. This was prior to the um, prior to the town meeting. The only thing I have on here is um, under discussion of Article 22, um, top of page 2, it talks about um, 